long time ago, a young girl named Anna lived with her parents in a small village at the edge of a dark forest. Anna's mother fell ill and died, leaving Anna with only her memories and the rag doll sewn for her last birthday. Her father swiftly remarried so that Anna would not miss her mother. Anna's stepmother, however, was selfish and mean, and her two daughters imitated their mother's every act. The mother prided herself on her slim figure and would eat only dry crackers and milk, even when Anna offered her fruits and cheeses. You will never see me get plump like a peasant, she said. Her father told Anna he must travel to the big city to sell his goods at the market, and he urged Anna to be useful and good and to help her stepmother while he was away. Anna promised him she would, so soon after he left town, Anna found herself building cobblestone walls, mucking animal stalls, and making bread and food for herself and her stepfamily. Rosa, help carry the urn of water so Anna can wash the steps, said the stepmother. But instead of helping, Rosa wrestled Anna with the jug so that water splashed all over Anna's dress and left her wet and messy. How sloppy you are, Anna, her sister laughed. The other sister, Zuzu, would knock Anna with the furniture when her mother asked her to move it aside for Anna to sweep the floor. Such ugly legs you have, Anna, said Zuzu, smiling with satisfaction at the bruises she had caused. You look like a stable boy. One day, as she was cooking, Anna finished the last speck of salt. The stepmother told Anna to wrap herself in a rug and go into the forest to borrow salt from their nearest neighbor, Baba Yaga. Anna's stepsisters taunted her with tales about the witch in the woods who lived in a cabin built on chicken feet and who eats children. Anna was afraid, but she hugged the rag doll her mother made for her and set out on her journey. The woods were dark, and the eyes of night creatures glowed from every tree. Anna talked to her doll, Maria, who kept her company and gave her courage. Maria, are you afraid in the dark? Just give me a hug, and you'll feel me with you. She walked for hours, and just at midnight, the full moon traced the outline of the cabin on chicken feet. The house was crudely built with no windows and just one door. When Anna pulled the garden gate, it screeched like something in pain. She took some butter from her lunch pail and rubbed it on the hinges, and the gate opened quietly and led her into the yard. Anna approached the door, but the house stood up on its chicken legs and turned around. She walked around to the other side, and again the house turned its door away. A wind came up and slammed the gate, which spoke up, telling Anna to say, Turn your back to the woods and your face to me. She did so, and the house spun around with its door open wide like a gaping mouth. Anna crept inside and heard growling, but she came to realize that the sound was a ferocious snoring. Suddenly, the wind blew the door shut, and the snoring stopped. All Anna could hear was the pounding of her own heart. Maria, she whispered, if you're afraid, just hug me. Who wakes me from my beauty sleep? My name is Anna. I came from over the hill to borrow salt for my family's soup. You steal my sleep to season your soup? I shall be too tired tomorrow to do my work. If you'll let me take shelter here tonight, then tomorrow I will do your work. Fine, said Baba Yaga. You may curl up over there. She gestured toward a large iron kettle filled to the top with carrots. Anna settled down on the pile of carrots and soon fell asleep with Maria serving as her pillow. As she slept, Baba Yaga sprinkled Anna with herbs and tossed in a large onion. Anna rose at dawn and remembered where she was. She shook off the herbs and quickly got to work. She made porridge for breakfast and cooked fresh applesauce from apples she picked from a sad, neglected tree in the yard. 
When the witch awoke, breakfast awaited her at the table. Good morning, said Anna. After you enjoy your breakfast, please let me know what work I can do for you to earn a cup of salt that I can take home to my family. A cup of salt? Salt is very precious and will cost you dearly. I will gladly do whatever you ask, said Anna. Then tidy the garden and have it finished before I come back this evening, Baba Yaga said. And she dashed out the door and flew off into the sky in her flying pestle and mortar. Anna began to work in the garden, pulling weeds, turning soil, and planting and watering seeds. She swept the path until it was clear, even though the broom knocked against her shins and tried to fight her all the way. The garden had been so badly neglected that thorns scratched her as she worked, but Anna kept on and had fashioned a pretty little garden by the time the sun was setting. At the edge of the horizon, she saw the flying mortar approaching and quickly washed up. Your garden is tidy, just as you asked, ma'am, she said to the witch, handing her a small bouquet of violets. That's well enough, but that alone cannot earn you something as rare as a cup of salt. Tomorrow you must clean the house from gable to cellar and wash the dishes while I'm away. Anna was so tired from her day in the garden that she curled up on the pile of carrots and was asleep even before the witch added two tomatoes. Anna woke the next day to find Baba Yaga already gone, so she jumped up to begin cleaning before any more of the day escaped. She filled a huge pail with water from the well and lurched from side to side as she hauled it into the house without spilling even a single drop. She washed and swept and dusted until the cabin was clean all over, and she soaked up enormous piles of dirty, crusted dishes until they sparkled. She was just drying the last plate when the witch stomped through the door. The house looks a bit better than it did when I left, she said. But you owe me one more day of work before you will have the cup of salt you desire. When I come home tomorrow, I expect a fine supper to be ready on the table. Anna was excited by the idea of the feast, and she dropped off to sleep with thoughts of the delicacies she would prepare. The next morning, she saw that the witch had dragged the pot of carrots in which she had been sleeping into the large fireplace, which was now lit with a crackling fire. Anna peeled and ground and baked and cooked until a wonderful array of delicious foods was spread across the dining table. Anna didn't hear Baba Yaga come in because the gate no longer squeaked, and she turned to see the witch staring at her with a ravenous gaze. Greetings, Baba Yaga, she said. I hope you enjoy this meal I specially prepared for you. Now, please let me have my cup of salt so I can run home before dawn and make salted porridge for my family. Baba Yaga glared at the girl and took a large bite of steaming red cabbage pie. She swallowed and her knobby Adam's apple bobbed in her throat. Anna looked on in horror as the witch began to moan. Anna leapt from her seat grabbed her rag doll and edged towards the door as tears began to stream down the witch's cheeks. This tastes just like the cabbage pie my mother used to make when I was a girl 400 years ago. The witch smiled a broad, toothless grin. Anna exhaled. Now may I have my cup of salt? The witch looked at her. No, she said. Anna held her breath. You shall have a sack of salt. And she loaded Anna up with a heavy cloth sack. Anna staggered out the door and into the garden pathway. The apple tree dropped two apples for the journey, and the flowers and happy vegetable plants waved in her direction. The house rose up on its great chicken legs and spun around, framing the witch in its doorway. Baba Yaga called after her. Come back next month. I'd love to have you for dinner. <laughs>